You know what changes? Everything. Times change. Technology changes. People change. Sometimes it seems overnight. You can resist it. You can adapt to it. But you can't ignore it. Our thinking is to lead it by changing the way we work, changing the way expectations are met, leading clients and the practice of law forward. You know what that changes? Everything. Hi and welcome to Take 5 of the Top 50 CEOs. It's a series of video interviews where we're speaking to Atlantic Business Magazine's 2020 Top 50 CEO Award winners. In just five questions, we try to find out what makes them tick and really what these thought leaders think about topical issues. My name is Dawn Chafe and I'm the co-owner and executive editor of Atlantic Business Magazine. For this episode, I'm joined by Jill Green. Now last uh, last year, when we held our 2020 awards, Jill was the CEO of Green Imaging Technologies and H2 Laboratories. Today, however, she is the Honorable Jill Green, Minister of Transportation and Infrastructure with the Government of New Brunswick. Minister Green, thank you so much for joining me today. We had worked hard to build our company. It was in a great place. I had a wonderful team around me that was very capable of doing it without me. Um, I really got the urge to try to make a difference and, and make improvements to our province. And I thought, what better way to do that than through public service and running for politics? I ran in 2018 and lost. And another election was called during COVID in 2020. And I decided to go for it one more time and I gave it everything I had and I won the election and our honorable premier saw fit to make me one of the ministers of the crown and I'm now a minister of transportation and infrastructure and having all kinds of ability to make things better in New Brunswick so it's like a dream come true. When you come from the pub private sector into the public sector, you look at things very, very differently because, you know, people that come up through the system in, in within government, you know, they, they learn a certain way to think. And when you're out in the entrepreneurial field, you're just trying to survive. Every day, you're just trying to survive. And your life is often like a roller coaster. So, you know, bringing that type of thinking when you come into government, it allows you to kind of think outside the box and maybe ask questions that people wouldn't normally ask just because, you look at things through a different lens and it's really great to have a bunch of people around the table with different backgrounds because we each contribute something different and can work together to find the best solutions going forward for New Brunswickers. Don, I actually see this from both sides because I was still working within my company when COVID happened you know, having to adjust in lockdown mode, then to go into yellow and orange and different colors to figure out how to get my team still continue to be productive when they can't travel. And our business was global. All, all our revenue came from outside of Canada. So we were on planes a lot. Um, and I still believe the best way to do business is face to face. So you need to look somebody in the eye and build a relationship. So it has been a, a big challenge for any business that needs to be able to do that. Um, you learn to use technology. We definitely use technology. We learned how to do training for existing customers online. Uh, we learned to look at different pieces of our business where we could find revenue without having to be at a customer site. Um, so you kind of find out how to do things differently so you can survive. Um, now I'm looking at it from a different perspective because my portfolio includes trains, planes, and boats. So um, you know, we're dealing with daily what the impact of the, uh, it has having on our airlines and our airports and trying to support them so that they can be ready to go. And, you know, immediately when we get everybody vaccinated and could get pe planes in the air again so that we can take advantage of that and so we can move people through our province and out of our province safely uh, so that we can get business rolling again as fast as we possibly can. So I was suffering from the problem and now I'm trying to help you know, make improvements so that when it's time to go, we are ready. It's around innovation, I guess, is probably the most valuable thing I learned uh, running my company. And I learned it very early on. And it was, we had a patent that uh, we thought was going to be the cornerstone of our company. And it actually was, but there was some uh, other patents out there that kind of were around the outside of it and we were worried that competition would get access to those and could could harm our business and harm our opportunity 
Um, those patents were held by a very large oil company, one known for valuing their intellectual property really highly. So they just kept all their intellectual property. But we had an in with them and we had an opportunity to go down and meet with them. And they were intrigued by what we were doing. And as we were getting ready for that first meeting, we kind of looked at each other and said, so what's the very best outcome we could get from this, this, this meeting? And, and what was obviously we want them to assign us their patents. That would be the absolute best outcome. And so we just, if we were young and, 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 you know, really trying to build this company. So we thought, why don't we just ask them for it? See what they say. And you know what? We asked them for it and they saw so much value in what we were doing. They offered to trade the patents with us to have a license to our software. So they became our first customer by making a trade with us. So we got the patents that we wanted. We got a relationship one of, with one of the big oil co- biggest oil companies in the world. Which, so we got to launch ourselves from there and everybody won. And I think what we learned is never be afraid to ask for what you want because you might just get it. And, you know, you can always back away from it if you can't, but ask. The worst thing they're going to say is no. And in this, in this instance, for us, they said yes. Um, my husband and I both went to school here in New Brunswick, and we were a little bit off kilter on our degree. So before I was done, he graduated. He got a chance to do his master. So he did that. Then I had a good job. So he had an offer to do his PhD and he ended up completing a PhD in electrical engineering, focusing on MRI technologies, which we eventually built our company around. And, but he had completely educated himself out of the job market here in New Brunswick and actually in Canada. So we ended up in Cleveland, Ohio, uh, built our life down there. We're very happy, had our children down there, but UNB has a world-class MRI center here in New Brunswick and Fredericton. And they were chugging away, doing lots of research and had come up with some technologies they thought were ready for commercialization. We came back every summer to visit family and we'd stop in at the lab and just because we were friends with, the, with them there and you know interested in what they were doing. And so they reached out to us and said, we have technologies we think are ready for commercialization. You guys have any interest in coming home? And we just laughed and ha ha ha, never thought like anything. But then we checked out the technology. Technology was actually really good. People were interested in it, wanting to buy some of the technology. So we thought, well, this is it. What's, how much farther are we going to be behind in our life if we take this opportunity to go for it? And our kids didn't even know their grandparents or their cousins anyway. So we decided to pick up and go for it. Um, and moved back home and never looked back. It's been awesome. We built a company in a the greatest place in the world to live, great business community around us, you know, such strong support in the community here in New Brunswick and actually in Atlanta, Canada, and just really proud to be back home and be part of this wonderful ecosystem and looking forward to continuing to grow it and grow businesses all over the Atlantic Canada.